My name is Mary Swick, and I am known as the Feng Shui Lady because I've spent a, a lot of my years working in and around the valley in people's homes and their businesses, uh, showing them how to incorporate some Feng Shui cures into their environments and making them more productive and prosperous. But today my passion, my, probably the passion that's been running all through my life, probably starting around uh, 1981, is astrology. And so I'm thrilled today to be talking about predictive astrology. Those who had the chance to come last month, we talked about the houses of astrology. Now we're going to start moving, going through time here. And my goal is, and I'm pretty confident I'm going to hit it, is that I want to put a new tool in your toolbox. Now we hear that saying all the time, but assuming that you all know something about astrology. Some maybe a little bit, some maybe know quite a bit. I, I'm feeling confident that today you're going to walk away and you're going to have more insight about your own life and more importantly, and maybe fun-wise, you're going to be able to share this information, look at somebody else's chart, a loved one, a child, a, a business partner, and you're going to be able to say, you know, I think this is what's going to be going on in your life. So that's, a, that's a quite a profound thing that you could predict. I don't, I'm not going to go into the whole cycle of prediction and, and should you predict or should you not predict. It's really the prediction is recognition that we're there are cycles. There are cycles in life. And once you really buy in and understand this concept, uh, you can predict. So we have an astrologer's toolbox that we're going to work on today. And I want to throw a thought out. So this is where we're going to go. Uh, this is the technical part here. What planet or luminary meaning the sun or the moon. And by the way, we are including Pluto as a planet today. I understand the astronomers may disagree, but it's a very important uh, uh, celestial body to consider here. But we've all heard stories where we maybe had a child that just, oh my god, they're so talented. They were so smart. They were so good in school. And oh my god, then they hit their 20s and their life seemed to kind of fall apart or go off in a different direction. And we thought, oh, did we wait? Was that wasted? Did we not capitalize? What happened here? We do it as well when we meet a friend that we haven't seen in a decade or two. And then we find out, wow, their life went in a different direction. So the idea here is that there's a background influence. And again, I'm going to try to avoid the word that the planet's making you do something, again, because that really isn't true in my world. It's the idea that your temperament changes as you go through different decades. And just to be clear here, I'm not saying that we all go through it at the same time with the same planetary energy. That's what makes it interesting. For example, someone can have a Venus decade, and by a decade I'm talking about 10 years of your life, and they can be indulged, they can be treated like a queen, even guys can find girls all they want, their romance life is great, and that may happen to someone when they're in their 20s, but somebody else may have that in their 50s. And so it gets kind of interesting when you start looking at people and this kind of pattern of development they go through. So this is what our goal is going to be today. And I'm hoping that the majority of you know something about your chart, because you're going to learn a lot if you know your chart already. Uh, you're going to be able to see what influences you've been under. And it, I think you're going to enjoy the whole process. So my next couple slides, they're very dry, because I just need to lay some basic information out. So let's look at the screen. And we're looking at a very simplified chart. In fact, there's no planets there. We're just looking at the wheel. And I just want to make sure that everyone's on the same page here, that as we uh, look at a chart, south is at the north, because south, yeah. south is at the top of the chart, and north is at the bottom of the chart. So thinking about that, east then is over here on the left-hand side, and west is over on the right-hand side. And that's just to get your bearings. So for those of you who are a little more technically inclined, you could take what I say today and just believe me, and you could go with it. It's accurate. I know some of you have a little more inquiring minds going, OK, I just need to, well, how can she say these things? This is giving you a little more of the background of it. So this is what we call this east point. We call the horizon or the ascendant. For those of us living in the Las Vegas Valley, I want you to think of Sunrise Mountain as being our ascendant. 
It's off to the east. The sun rises. And if we could see all the planets, they are all rising from the east part of the valley. They come across and they set, of course, out by red rock as they go over the mountains. So the concept is what is rising. So I want to see what is the rising point in the chart. And maybe you've heard someone say, oh, I'm a Libra, my moon is an Aries, and I've got a Capricorn rising. And all they're telling you, and this would be the book, the person was born in Las Vegas, they'd be saying Capricorn was rising over Sunrise Mountain when I was born. Again, that's to give it a local feel to it, so to speak. Or someone else might say, yes, it was rising over the Atlantic Ocean if you were sitting, you know, if you were on a bigger uh, view. So we have the horizon or the ascendant. And I think, I'm hoping you all agree where that red point is, that is the ascendant in a chart. Okay, so that was the first dry lecture, okay? Just to get the bearings of what we're talking about. So let's move on here, and now let's look at a second principle. When we're looking at a chart, and now we're gonna, remember, we, we wanna do prediction. So we're talking about movement. And what direction are they moving? Let's make sure we have the planets moving in the right direction. We're moving clockwise. Those of you who were here last month, we talked about the houses or the chart as being a 24-hour clock. And that's all it is. It's a 24-hour clock. So let's say someone is being born right now, so to speak. We now would see the planets. We're going to predict well, what's going to happen to that person in five years or ten years. We would actually want to start looking to see where are the planets moving. And I want you to just always visualize planets are moving clockwise. There it is. We, have the, we all know where the horizon is in a chart. We know the concepts of what directions the planets are moving. Now we want to take those two basic dry facts, and now we want to put them together, because this is where the fun starts to happen. 